From Washington, D.C., the Department of the Army proudly presents the Jazz Ambassadors Inside the Big Band. This 19-piece big band has appeared in all 50 states, Canada, Mexico, Japan, India, and throughout Europe in concerts and clinics, radio and television programs, and major music festivals. Their festival performances include the Montreux, North Sea, Toronto, and Newport Jazz Festivals. As part of an ongoing series of instructional videos by the United States Army Field Band, Inside the Big Band contains information on styles and techniques for jazz bands of any level. Now, here's the director of the Jazz Ambassadors, Chief Warrant Officer Kevin Laird. Hi. And welcome to Inside the Big Band. The Big Band, as we know it today, evolved from the jazz groups of the Dixieland era back in the early 1900s, which often featured a front line of trumpet, trombone, and clarinet, playing a spirited, loosely organized kind of group improvisation. By the early 30s, jazz bands started getting larger, and the three horns on the front line grew into three sections, trumpets, bones, and reeds. As the bands got bigger, the music had to be more carefully organized, and the group improvisation of the Dixieland style gave way to swing arrangements by musicians like Don Redman, Fletcher Henderson, and Benny Moten. In the 30s and 40s, swing was the thing, and big bands dominated the music scene. Back then, the instrumentation varied wildly from band to band. This was partly a marketing thing, as each band tried to create its own trademark kind of a sound. But it was also about money. The more popular a band leader was, the more money he could charge. So the size of the band showed off the status of its leader. Anyway, whatever their instrumentation, the first generation of big bands was all about playing swing music for dancers. The big band repertoire has developed a lot since the 30s, but our musical values remain exactly the same, to make the music swing and to provide a vehicle for creative improvisation. We've divided our presentation into four sections. In part one, we'll look at the mechanics of musical styles. In part two, we'll demonstrate embellishments and special effects. Part three, putting it all together, looks at how to get the best results from each section and how to bring the sections together to get a great big band sound. Finally, part four presents an introduction to jazz improvisation. Our chief arranger, Sergeant First Class Vince Norman, has written a chart called Porch Swingin' to help you apply the lessons in this video. We've also prepared a companion booklet. You can download Porch Swingin' and the booklet from our website and print them out whenever you want. We put a lot of information in this video, and you're going to hear a lot about the importance of listening. In order to play this music with confidence and authority, you have to know what it's supposed to sound like. You have to have heard the music played by the pros. The time you spend listening to jazz greats will not only make you a better musician, it'll be fun, too. So start going through records at the library. Check out your local retailers. Ask people you know if they have any jazz recordings you could listen to. You might even want to get a turntable to play old records because a lot of great big band albums haven't been released on CD. And by all means, listen to live jazz whenever you get the chance. That includes coming to hear the jazz ambassadors when we're in your area. We hope you enjoy Inside the Big Band. Now, let's get on with the show. In this section of the video, we'll focus on the musical styles most common to the big band. We'll begin with swing, then Latin and Brazilian, and end with funk. The swing style took America by storm in the 1930s and 40s. It reached virtually every segment of American culture because it was fun, had lots of energy, and most importantly, it made people want to dance. So let's take a look at how we create the swing feel. Focus on the ride cymbal, hi-hat, and string bass. With the drums, it's important to emphasize the ride cymbal and hi-hat while backing off the snare and kick drum. Also on the ride cymbal, notice how the upbeats of two and four push toward beats one and three. This provides momentum, which gives us some of that energy that makes swing so much fun to listen to. Now to the bass. The strong, steady quarter notes line up perfectly with the ride cymbal and the hi-hat on beats two and four. This groove in the bass and drums is the backbone of the swing style. Once the groove is set up, it's up to the rest of the band to make their parts fit inside this feel. 
Usually when reading medium swing music, eighth notes are swung, like do da do da do da do while quarter notes and tied pairs of eighth notes are played short unless marked long. Here's an example. You might have noticed that the quarter notes on beats two and four were played with more emphasis and that the ends of groups of eighth notes were short and accented. These are also standard characteristics of swing. There are so many of these kinds of rules and interpretations that the best way to learn what to do is to listen to as many big band recordings from different eras as you can. And then when somebody says to play in the style of Count Basie, Thad Jones, Mel Lewis, or Glenn Miller, you'll have a really good grasp of what they want. Let's move on to the shuffle. A shuffle is another form of swing. For the drums and guitar, it means minor adjustments to the basic swing pattern. Notice the eighth notes in the drummer's left hand on the snare drum. Also notice how beats two and four are slightly accented while beats one and three are softer. A variation of this pattern has the hi-hat playing all of the upbeats instead of beats two and four. Another kind of shuffle is the rock shuffle, also called a roadhouse shuffle. The pattern is the same except that the drummer's right hand plays on a slightly open hi-hat, accenting all quarter notes. This type of shuffle has a more raucous sound. Now that you're starting to understand the swing feel, we're going to slow the tempo down and show how this changes things. A swing ballad is challenging because every person in the band has to think the same way or it won't be together. In other words, you need to subdivide the rhythmic pulse through the whole chart. This can be hard at first, but the rhythm section can give the band clues on where or actually when to play the notes. To demonstrate, our drummer will now play the subdivision. Now he'll take away the crutches, and we'll see if we can all keep it going on in our heads. When this happens, remember to listen closely to the rhythm section. Even though the drummer has stopped playing the subdivision, the rhythm section is still providing some clues about where the subdivisions are. As we're sure you've noticed, the eighth notes in the swing feel are played with a triplet feel. Notice as the saxophone section demonstrates the swing eighth notes at a slow tempo. The eighth notes straighten out as the tempo increases. Listen to what happens each time they speed it up. The eighth notes will almost completely even out by the time the tempo is half note equals 144. This is when articulation and accents become very important for keeping it swinging. A basic rule to follow is to accent the tops of lines and the first note after a change in the direction of the line. 
Here's the lead alto part to this sax soli with the accents written in the appropriate places. You may want to mark your parts at first to remind yourself, but eventually the accents will become second nature. The next selection is a jazz waltz written by Vince Norman entitled Goodbye, Mr. Schultz. There is really no difference in feel from a regular swing chart except that it's in three instead of four. The next two categories cover the most common forms of Latin music played by big bands. The first, Afro-Cuban music, includes the cha-cha, salsa, and the 6-8 Afro-Cuban. The second group of Latin styles is from Brazil, with roots in Africa as well. We'll play examples of the samba and the bossa nova. The differences between these styles are found in the rhythm section, mostly with the bass and drums. For each style, we'll show you the patterns being played. For some of the styles will show possibilities for Latin percussion. Percussionists should keep in mind that their role is a supportive one. Rhythmic patterns need to be assigned for each percussion instrument in order to achieve a good uncluttered groove. Resist the temptation to just grab something out of the percussion box and start banging on it. Horn players, listen to the way the rhythm section plays the eighth notes in these examples. The eighth notes in your parts should feel the same. Next is a Cuban style called the cha-cha. The cha-cha is a popular dance style at medium tempo. It has a very distinct feel and rhythmic pattern. Afro-Cuban music in the mid to late 20th century was coined salsa because it combined many different musical ingredients. Its origins stem from Africa by way of Cuba as a style called son. Developed further in New York City, it's become popular around the world. It's important to note that in salsa, the bass player almost always anticipates rather than plays the downbeats, a rhythm referred to as tumbao. Here's the rhythm section demonstrating a basic salsa pattern. Here's part of a salsa composition by Sergeant Major Gene Thorne called Layover in San Juan. The Afro-Cuban 6-8 originated in West and Central Africa. It is distinguished by a repeated syncopated rhythm played over a triplet foundation. This kind of music was actually the forefather of swing. From Brazil, the samba is another popular dance style. It came from the streets of Rio de Janeiro during Carnival, and it has a lively dance feel.
Our second Brazilian style is the Bossa Nova. Bossa Nova is Portuguese for new trend. This style was created by changing a samba into something a little slower, softer, and more relaxed. <laughs> The rhythm and blues style of the 1950s and 60s developed into the funk style of the 70s. It continued to progress to what's now called hip-hop. You might not think that there's much connection between what you hear on the radio and jazz swing, but listen and you'll notice that they both have that same swing feel. Now there's also straight funk, which is more closely related to rock than swing because it doesn't have that swing feel. Here's part of Sergeant Major Gene Thorne's Surfin' the Net, played first as a straight funk and then as a shuffle funk or hip-hop. <laughs> 